And the final game for this episode is Dreamscape. Designed by David Asluis. Artist is David Asluis. And it's published by Silex. David Asluis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so real quick, we played this game. This is a Kickstarter that just finished, what, within the last month or so? Uh, no, it was it was several months oh, okay, ago. Cool. But it is sort of published by David Oslus because he's the one who started that company, Silex. <laughs> ah, there you go. He yeah. does it all. The man of the mystery. Anyway, <laughs> so this game we played on Tabletopia. There is a free version of it on there with um, some limited stuff, obviously. So this is... I know we talk in a review format with a lot of our games, but obviously we always try to do first impressions because sometimes we've only played the game once, which typically is usually enough to tell if you're going to really enjoy or not enjoy a game. But uh, so Dreamscape is a game. And I'm going to butcher this story probably, but basically <laughs> your dudes running out on the map, trying to collect dream shards so that you can have these fantastic dreams to, to, to dream about once you go to sleep every round. There's probably more to the story. You don't probably need to know it, but uh, the game comes with a board that's in the middle. There's six locations, and each location has a line of dream shards. Dream shards are essentially just colored wooden discs. Each player has a hexagon grid board in front of them that once they collect those things, they're going to put them on their grid and try to form these dream sequences, which are these cards that you get, and the cards essentially show you how this dream sequence, like you might be over top of a mountain looking over some water. And the way you do that is two gray circles on top of each other with two blue circles next to it and a tree, you know, type of deal. So you're trying to form that exact dream from the card and also put your little dude in the same spot that it shows on that card. Once you've done so, you get points. So the way the round works, uh, we're going to come back to the first phase because it's more like a maintenance kind of thing. The main phase, which is the second phase, is you're going to have four actions to move around on this main board and collect dream shards. You have action points. You have four action points. You can spend one to move to an adjacent location. You can spend one to pick up a dream shard. You have to pick these up right to left. So there might be, you know, a white that you need, but it's two things away from the end. So you might want to try to do a special ability to re rearrange those or whatever. There's That's pretty much the two actions though there are plenty of free actions that you can do your dream cards have special abilities on them one per card that you can take a shard and place it on top of it you'll get that back next round essentially but you won't have it for the creation phase which will come next uh, but you do activate a special ability that way that's a free action each of the six locations has a special ability built onto the location you, you have this like initiative marker that shows you which number you are that round, like one, two, three, four player. You can flip that upside down and that will activate the special ability on the thing that the location that you're on. And then you have a couple of more things that you can do. You can, um, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. What's the other free thing you can do? You can move around for free if you oh, yeah. have the, the yeah. one that's called the key. Yeah, there's a key like stone, basically. It's a key spot. The first, <laughs> the first spot, spot on each track of dream shards on each location has a you know a disc and if it's blue and you happen to have a blue in your hand then you can move on to that spot for free so as you collect discs you can move around uh but during the next phase so ever after everybody's done this then we move on to the creation phase all the dream shards that you've been collecting have went into your hand and why by that i mean on your actual player board there's a set of hands that you sit them on you don't mm -hmm. have to hold them in your hands <laughs> conveniently a pair of hands to put them in uh, you're going to place all these. You do this in turn order, although you could do this simultaneously to speed up game. <clears throat> but basically, you're going to take your your dream shards from your hand, and you have to place them all. You can spend them for other things. Like, for instance, you can spend the green ones to, to generate a tree. There's only so many of those in the game based on the number of players. And you can also spend, like, white ones. They go back in the bag, but it moves your little dude that's on your personal player board around. Because you get a guy there, and you've got a guy. That's like your guy moving around in your dream world. And then you actually have a physical dreamer that's out on the main board in the middle. Uh, so that's how you get your little dude to move on to the spot he needs to complete the dream. Uh, as you place out these different uh, dream shards, they have to be kind of contiguous. So they have to start on a starting space and kind of branch out from there. Uh, you can stack them on top of each other, and there's special abilities to move those around. There's special abilities uh, on the locations and the different dream cards to draw new cards. Anytime you complete a card, uh, you, you get to draw a card based on the location you're at. So if you're at location three, you get to draw 
three cards. And just to touch on that real quick, there's three difficulties of cards. There's, you know, one, two, and three. They get bigger and bigger and bigger stuff to make. They're worth tons of points for the level three, but you're probably only going to complete one of those a game. Uh, but when you draw cards after you complete one, you get to look through as many cards as the location you're on and pick from that. Or the location six has the same ability when you flip your token that will allow you to draw six cards from one of those decks. Uh, after the, the creation phase, then you're going to move on to the, the, the first phase, which I skipped. But basically, you're just going to replenish the dream shards on the spaces. You're going to get reorganize the initiative markers and then all your special abilities on your cards that you covered up those dream shards go back into your hand which is how you get those back otherwise if you didn't spend them during the dream seek uh the, the creation phase those go away so you just do this you only have six rounds of the game to do and then at the end of the game whoever's the most points wins there are some in or there's goals that are generated kind of at the very beginning of the game i think there's four of them usually yes yeah, and each one has, uh, it might say, like, whoever has the most of this color uh, shard, but you actually draw that shard out of the bag at the beginning of the game and seed it on top of that. So it might be like, all right, well, this game, it's blues. Or if you, this one's gray, but if you have two, you get this many. If you have five, this many. Ten, you, or seven, you get this many. There might be, like, the longest road type of thing in Catan. So whoever has the longest green road or longest blue road, even though it's not really a road at that point, Stuff like that. So it was like in-game uh, conditions you would work towards as well. And uh, like I said, whoever has the most points after six rounds is the best dreamer. I don't know what it actually says in the book. But. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> Matt, did you check this video out? I can't remember. I did not watch anything on this. Oh, okay. So uh, Matt's going to check out some pictures. This is, uh, is an interesting one because it is not published yet. I mean, obviously the Kickstarter is done, but the game has not been sent out mm -hmm. the or fulfilled through Kickstarter. Correct. And we're simply playing Tabletopia. There is a lot of content that is added into the game for the Kickstarter. So this is only first impressions off of the Tabletopia version. Yeah, there's a base game. Uh, we haven't played with, uh, there's like a nightmare <laughs> phase, um, which is advanced rules. Right, which will, yeah. I think, add a lot to the game because <laughs> then you'll get these tokens that are nightmare tokens, a uh, red color that only block you. Mm -hmm. uh, although if you trade in three of those, you can get, I don't know, some kind of benefit from it. So, oh. right. So you, sometimes you want to collect them, but most of the time they're just terrible. Right. Yeah. Well, it's going to be an interesting podcast on huh. this, on this thing. Uh, I don't know. I've had time to sleep on it. <laughs> <Did you>? so, <laughs> <okay. laughs> we have <laughs> Matt's laughing at me like a crazy person. Uh, he was actually making a joke and I got it. So, uh, we've played this a couple times. We mm -hmm. played it actually just last night to refresh for the podcast. Yeah. And so uh, this might be the one that we've had the most distance in what we feel about the game. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Eric, or, like, oh. George, we, we'll start with you. I adore this game. <laughs> I, <Yeah. laughs> I want to play it. I want to play it again. He has right stakes now. in the game. He I, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, skin in the game. I did, but it's because I, I liked the idea. I, I thought I would enjoy how it plays. That's why mm -hmm. I backed it. And that's why when I saw it on Tabletop, I said, we have to play this. That's yeah. fair. And having played it, I've really enjoyed it both times we've played. And yeah, I would say I, I enjoyed it even more the second time. Um, just understanding more of the role sets and, and you know what's your possibilities and what you're truly trying to do during your turn yeah it's for me it's just it's a very pleasant spatial puzzle to be moving around uh on the main board you can get to any of the special actions within one two or three moves yeah yeah and you might have to pay for those or you might but, not if you have the shards that are key shards you can get there for free right so that puzzle of figuring that out and trying to be efficient and what is the best way to do those things and it's basically a efficiency puzzle Trying to be the most oh, efficient, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's a it's a meaty puzzle and and a very satisfying one for me as far as uh, you use your four actions to collect your shards and then you build your little dreamscape and you get points for it. It's just that's mm -hmm. it's really pleasant. So I'll, I'll say uh, you know I, I like the artwork uh, quite a bit um, and, and the theme of it. It works out for me. It kind of feels like hey, you know, you're dreaming of this and you're you're having <laughs> to create something. And anytime you're creating something. Uh, those are the type of games I, I typically like as well. Um, and in this case, you're, I guess you're recreating these dreams or whatnot. 
Um, and I, I like that the, the dream cards are, I believe all unique and, um, they are, uh, appropriate, not, well, not really appropriate because, uh, they show you, uh, a depiction of your dream and you're kind of recreating that. Like you said, if it's, uh, you know, you're on top of a mountain and you're looking over, uh, water, you know, that's, that's what you're creating <coughs> in your low player board. Uh, yes. Yeah. The cards so. themselves, the art is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so then you're creating that scene in this abstract way, but then you have the card, which shows you, this is what that scene would actually look like sort right. of in the background. It's, it's clever. Yeah. So, uh, I, I like that, uh, quite a bit. And then, um, I like that there's a, a lot of different ways to actually, uh, score points, whether that's movement, you know, you could move on top of a mountain and get two points. You move on the water, you get a point, you make trees. Uh, one tree, you get one point, you know, your second tree, you get two points and so forth, three and four and five. So that is a possibility to rack up points. Um, you can obviously do your cards, which are probably going to be the, the, <coughs> on most games where you get the, uh, the most points. Uh, but you know, that's not something that you have to only do. Uh, you do have other ways to gain points, uh, doing the objective cards. So you have to keep a lot of those. Uh, factors in mind uh, when playing, and, you know, getting the most out of all your actions. That's fair. I, all right, here's what I'll say. I think that the theme is on point. It's got a really cool theme. It's got pretty much unique gameplay. I, I know when we first played it, I recommended Reef to George uh, just because what you're doing in the game is you're stacking things and trying to form like little clusters of different whatever, like dioramas, I guess. And you get points out of it. And that's kind of what you're doing with Reef, although Reef is only that. This mm -hmm. game has a lot more going on. And I guess I will recognize, after I've had some sleep, <laughs> <laughs> I will recognize that this game is very deep. It has mm -hmm. a deep level of strategy. You're not going to be able to master this. I think it has way too much, like way too much thinking going on for me to enjoy it. Oh, I, I, I like that thinking aspect right. of this game. Well, and Eric and is crazy good at it. Right, right. To... So, it, but what I'm saying is if you, if you enjoy planning a massive, it's <laughs> not a even, lot. It's no, not it is it's it's, definitely, I plan like, I already know what I'm going to do next turn. Yeah. yeah Eric so. is really good at this. Game. Yeah. You, that lies. No, you hope no. what you can do that stuff because, because, because very similar to five tribes, the stuff that you might plan for is no longer there possibly because right. and, and, and you almost no, don't even need to start thinking until it's your turn again. Ooh. Well, no, that's, that's true in some aspects, but not really true. I on, on other people's turns will go ahead and plan my strategies and like, all right, so I need a Brown. I need to go move here. So I need a white. So I need, I need a brown, a white, and a green. So I kind of already know what I want. Well, that, that's true. If those true. aren't there, all right, I need to get another card and start working on kind of finalizing where I'm going to move these tiles after I complete this first card. So so there is it a lot of It wasn't as bad when we played three players, but when mm -hmm. we played four, it was terrible. I do not think this is enjoyable for players B because the amount of change that happens between the first player going and the fourth player going. Now, I will say well, that you could mitigate that by trying to get further up and taking the first player marker next mm -hmm. turn. Right. Because you and can so placement decently will matter. do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can, but there are so many of those free actions that are powers that can allow you to pretty much do whatever you want. So regardless yeah. of the fact that the board changes, there's so many ways to accomplish mm -hmm. what you need to. I feel like it's not that limiting. Yeah, so if you need a green but you need it in a different spot, then you, you can do an action that maybe is on your dream card or that's on the board that allows you to take those items or those shards off your board back into your hand. And so then you can replace those on, onto your board in a spot that's more beneficial. Well, or, that's fair. Well, let's talk about the one I think glaring problem with this is the analysis paralysis. Mm. It's an it, issue. It could yeah. be an issue. It Certainly, be, there's right. a lot yeah, of there options. There's a lot of options. There's a I'll lot give, of things to think idea, about. I'll give you an idea, Matt. I'll give you an idea. You have this stuff laid out on your board, and then it's your turn. You're like, oh, let's see how the card comes out. You flip out literally six cards. Mm -hmm. If you were playing for real, like tournament style, 
right? No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> this would yeah. be an absolutely terrible tournament game. I agree. Uh, it would be awesome because you could see some brilliant people battling it against each other for the, like seven and a half hours. <laughs> It'd be amazing. <laughs> but no, 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 not that no. Long. You, you would. I mean, I'm exaggerating, but yes. but like you flip out six cards, you have no clue what to do. And now you're like, I got to calculate forty million calculations in my head on that card might work, but I have to do all these things. This card may work. I kind of have to do all these things. Oh, uh, I don't know. Right. I can you I could, can look at six cards and in 10 seconds know which one is going to work, and all these are definitely not. I mean, well, you, can, yes. you can eliminate you can, some of them. You can eliminate, fast, yeah. yeah. You can probably eliminate half of them really quick off the bat. <laughs> you know, oh, my trees are on all my browns, and... Uh, well, in that case, yeah, if you right. got trees, you're limited. <laughs> right, yeah. So there, there is things that are going to limit you, um, depending on when you get those cards. You know, if you have a, a lot of blue outs, and you see cards that you know, require you to have a lot of brown or something, then you, you might not go for those cards. So you you can, you know, get down to a, a certain number of cards that, you know, you'll be like, uh, I have something that w could work for this one the best. And, it, and not, it might not be true, you know, it might be these two cards are pretty similar and you're going to have to just go with one of them. I mean, that's fair. I don't know. I think that for a lot of people, this is going to be maybe deeper than what they want. Cause I feel like there's a, there's a level of, of enjoyment that most people get out of, out of thinking. And when sure. it becomes work, <laughs> it's no longer entertaining to a lot of people. Yeah. And I like I'll to think, yeah. I like to think, but I feel like this one just gets to the tip where it's like a little bit too much. Yeah. Of course, we're well, also playing this game at 10 o'clock at night, so sure. maybe it'll be yeah. different if it's like 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I think but, the vibe of the game, the theme of the game, the way that it presents itself, you can play this game without giving it that much thought, and you can just sort of go in there and... You might not be as competitive. You might not be as You will do right. terrible, yeah. Well, yeah. but you'll make... But you can have fun. You'll make these little landscapes that you <laughs> right. that you want to make, and you'll make them the way that you want to, and, mm -hmm. and yeah. you know, you could just roll with the game. I can see that. Right. Speaking of the, like make the landscapes or whatever, I mean, we had that conversation last night where I kind of feel like, I don't know, like I feel like there's not as much continuity between the different ones. Like I, I you, you say I can see the next one and I can build it or whatever, but I don't really see, I, I would have liked it more if things kind of matched almost like a puzzle. Like oh. this one works really good with like these, uh, I, but it's I, almost I would, like you have to deconstruct actually, stuff just to move on to the next one. I wouldn't like you that. Do? as much because then you can always go in trying to go for a specific card. There's a card in uh, the second deck that's really close to what I already have in my first deck. In this case, um, they're all going to be a little different. I'm not really You're saying have to... similar though. I'm saying like it could build off of it. Like if well, you got right. a waterfall, make the next thing a waterfall like a plus beach. something. Yeah, you yeah. know, right. Like almost like you kind of continue a scene. I think Which, it does have yeah. that. It... Does it? To Absolutely. some extent, uh, there, there's going to be things that use similar stuff, but it's not going to be like you can use half of whatever you already built. But you still you have to move have to things move it around. around. It's mm. the movement thing. It's using the, the, the power that lets you uh, move tiles around. Or pick up tiles. That yeah. makes hand. the difference there for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I think it has a real ticket to ride sort of vibe where you you take... <laughs> now, you're on. gonna have to explain yeah. this. I one. will. Yeah. Just right. in the sense that you take these cards, and like some trains. of them will work together. So you have a route that works with another route, right? But if you don't finish your cards, you get a negative at the end of the game. So you're it's a risk reward kind of thing. Do I take that card mm -hmm. that may work with what I have, or or you know do I leave it because it doesn't work with what I'm currently going with? That's and fair. In in that sense, it's definitely. Other than that, not like ticket drive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see what your comparison is. Like, I'm not a big fan of negative points for cards at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. I do recognize the need for it because right. otherwise, you could just have a bevy of special abilities out in front of you. Exactly, and mm -hmm. it would it, you could probably do way too easy, you know, configurations with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I did not like that it has negatives. I also didn't like that you start the game with like the weakest card. We had talked about maybe starting the game with one of the cards from the uh the the third stage which, i guess which right. you do have that option because you can 
shimmy over to uh, spot number six. Yeah, you just and, do that early on. Right, True. and do that early on. And that's that actually what I did, but I don't know if that was a which, good or bad choice. No, I would say it's a good choice. It probably is because you have it, more turns. Right, to, it takes you you know quite a few turns just to finish out a hard card. So you don't want to grab one of those hard cards on the fifth or sixth round because you're not going to have enough time to change your landscape to what you need. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about the pacing of the game and over the course of the six rounds, it doesn't feel like enough time. I mean, there's you never feel right. like you it, can do enough. But I agree I, with that. But over the course of the six well, rounds. I actually think that's a good thing, though. Right. Well, it, goes, it goes quickly enough. But the thing is, we did, what, five cards in uh, six probably rounds? Probably so. Mm-hmm. Did you do more Some than of that, us. Eric? I think I, Eric probably did more. <laughs> Some of us. I think I completed like I, I think I completed four, but only one of them was level three. So I got like twenty points and then four for everything else. Right. Yeah. Trying to get two level threes uh <clears throat> probably not doable. And I well, probably know, not. Yeah. The, the reason I think it's Matt, just to kind of explain to you, the reason I think that the, the thinky part is too much is because here's the level of, of thinking that you're gonna have to do. <laughs> right? Because you're grabbing shards for these different locations. But you kind of want to maximize those the types the the locations you get, so that you're collecting shards that also contribute to the in game goals. Right. But on the top of that, you also want to think about the special ability it provides and how it's gonna how you can utilize that. Exactly. Yeah. And and then on top of that, it's you know trying to rebuild your strategy literally every player's turn unless they happen to not take anything that you're looking for, and so like. Well, yeah. actually, I, I don't even do that. I don't even look at the board until it's my turn because you don't really need to. I, I look at my own personal board. And, and kind of think about what you want, or what you right, need, what I and need. then you have assess it at the And then time. assess it, right. Yeah. I so, sit there and look at the board and think, don't take that, don't take that. <laughs> right, I don't I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because there's always another way to get yeah. the thing. So. Well, there's always a possibility. Well, possibility, yes. I, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like, because both games work like this, I think that one player is going to be demolished every time you play this. <laughs> I don't I don't see that. And, uh, and it's Tim. <laughs> it was, Tim. No, I, didn't, I didn't do that bad right. the first time. I'm just giving you a hard time. But I did bad the second time. So mm. I don't know. I don't see why why <laughs> why would you think that one person is always going to get demolished? Because because the turn order changes. Now okay, it, it could be specifically due to the maybe there's more cards in the actual game when it comes out. Maybe yeah. there's more options. There are. There are. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I think that in the limited amount of cards that you have in the Tabletopia version, it's really hard for multiple people to be comboing off of the cards just because there's not a lot of cards to choose from. I mean, it was like a deck of 10 or 15 in each. I mean, it sounds like a lot of cards, but mm -hmm. when you draw six, you're like, this is what? But you only I, need I, three of I, them to go together. And I mean, I, that's fair. And, you're and I, I don't think it's is meant for you to combo one card off after another card. Like, uh, you, you think you know, it's I, more of like, you have to deconstruct to build the next thing. Right. And, yeah. and I think that's really the purpose behind it. It is, you have this dream. Now you have a dream of something else. Of course you want to use, you know, the things and, and the resources that you already have, if you have them, but I don't think that you're going to try to, I already have this halfway built. <clears throat> and get a car that's already halfway built for you. No, that's fair. Yeah. Eric should give a class on how to play this game. Like, it was <laughs> ridiculous. Last night, you had cards that didn't go together at all, and yet you were able to rebuild yourself to make them yeah. work. It was... Maybe that's it. I just need to be trained. It was annoying. It was really <laughs> annoying. I, I, I will say that I do enjoy playing the game. It's just that it, it's... I don't know, like, because I do have a competitive nature to me in some way. Mm -hmm. And so if you're competitive at all, this is going to be a rough game for you unless you, it really clicks. Yeah. And I think that yeah. it's almost, for me, it's almost just a tad bit too much of, holy crap, there's too many options to think about to build this crazy intertwining strategy, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing for the game because I think you can, I mean, that's really well designed. But there's a, there, like I said in the beginning, there has to be a, a level of enjoyment. I don't feel like, I feel like I was working. Oh, yeah? I was working. I, yeah. I was, if I had Excel open on my other monitor, I could probably graph this graph thing out, out <laughs> and, you know, put it in a PowerPoint presentation. I don't know. I think that's, I think that's a fair observation that, that it's a personal thing. Did it click with you? Because 
I, I never once felt like I was working. I felt like you know. I was, felt like I was working, but I enjoyed what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was it was good mental exercise, I guess. And I'm usually the one who has the AP. Oh um, yeah. Out of the three of us, wouldn't you say? I I don't know. I haven't really experienced. I don't think so. Yeah. Like I mean, I think. So far, it seems like we have about the same level of AP. Yeah, I think you're probably quicker to say, "All right, you know what? Whatever, let's go." Right. <laughs> than we are. Like Eric, Eric is by far the person who will not move on until he is ready. Yeah, and I'll be like, "Here, here, wait, wait." wait. <laughs> I haven't figured out the best move yet. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's actually surprising that Eric's turns weren't actually that long. So we were just lucky that he was so able to figure he, out the he best was, move. He was on it. Yeah, on yeah. it. This is his game. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know. It's 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 a great game. I'm not going to say that it's a crap game, but if you're not looking for a game, or if you want to play a game that does not, how, how am I supposed to say this? If you don't want to feel like you're doing a massive amount of CPU crunching in your own head, <laughs> my, I mean, this is not the game for you. But if you really want to get in and have like this abstract ish kind of game that actually has a really cool theme going on and often honestly everything packaged together is rather unique mm -hmm. yeah i cannot think of another game and like i said that reef is the closest thing and i know that is completely different it just has the same idea of comboing and building things to make these yeah. patterns or dioramas or whatever yeah. and yeah. other than that what else is there i mean i can't think of anything that does what this game does it's... no and i've been trying since you said that the yeah. other day i've been <laughs> yeah. trying to think of one i can't yeah so it, it's definitely unique i think this is a very innovative game yeah so and and it's interesting a lot of david oz's games are like that <laughs> there's dark darker darkest and panic station are some of his and and oh. they're very unique and they're either loved or hated mm. i thought i had that but it's space alert ah okay yeah it's those games are either you know Love, it or hate love them it. or hate them. So I think this is going to be another one of those. And I'm in the love camp because it's a really nice puzzle, really nice special puzzle. Yeah. If you if you love puzzly games, this is oh, yeah. one for you for yeah. sure. Very you pretty. like building stuff, puzzle puzzly type games. Yeah. yeah. And there's expansions that are coming for it that include animals. Uh, critters. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Uh, and so they each come uh in all the the colors uh the same five colors and give you powers and then there's going to be will of the wisps that you... i saw that that looks awesome yeah, like a little yeah. fire looking well the yeah. wisp i guess or whatever right but... and so you put those out on your board and as you build out to them they sort of you, you save them or you collect them and then they give you powers as well when you have a set of them uh and then there's ravens and nightmares and and you know hmm. things where you can be more interactive with the other players mm -hmm. and sort of like send them to ravens to mess up their plans so that's, oh, there's going to be a lot. That, Tim would love that. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> that's, not, that's interesting. Okay. But but we could both send ravens to Eric. Oh, bam! No. No. Bam! I might lose, but I'll kingmake Eric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm interested in playing the game when it physically comes out because Tabletopia is garbage. <laughs> uh, it is clunky as all get out, although I will say it's free. So if you are interested in the game, definitely try it on there mm -hmm. because it, even though it's clunky and it basically has zero physics, <laughs> uh, it is nice that you can actually try these games out Absolutely. and not have to actually purchase the app. Tabletop simulator, yep. you have to purchase, but there is far less official stuff. These uh, most things on tabletop or tabletopia is official, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from what I gather, right. especially this one is for sure. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyway, final thoughts, Matt, Matt, Matt. What? What is your interest level? Uh, I don't know. It doesn't sound bad. Um, the only thing that's kind of weird is uh, I noticed that like everything's called shards and they're just little wood chips. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of that it kind of messes with my brain a little bit. But I mean, <laughs> I could get through that. I guess the idea is like shards of a dream, so you're piecing them together and it makes yeah. this. Nah, I guess so. Little diorama. I like to use that word. Yeah. <laughs> diorama. Good word. Good word. Drinking game. This, this <laughs> diorama. diorama. <laughs> I don't know you're drunk. But okay, final thoughts. Anything else? I liked it a lot. I'll, I'll probably pick it up. Cool. One of my favorites. Fair enough. All right. Well, that is Dreamscape. <laughs>